Hello, hello. What's up, guys and gals? I wonder how many girls are watching my channel. I really don't know. But um, I have to check the uh, demographic. Anyways, this video is about one, what countries I've been to. Um, it's gonna talk a little bit about my story, why I traveled. It's gonna, we're gonna talk about importance of USD and uh, making USD and uh, making euros um, while traveling. Um, we're gonna talk about what do you need to actually travel successfully and enjoy a good time, you know, you know, while working, uh, you know, maybe in a remote job or working a business. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to go over at the end of the, at the end of the video, going to go over what I'm up to, the current projects I'm doing and you know, what's next for me. So stay tuned. All right, so let's start. What could, what countries have I been to? And I'll talk about what country I like the best. So I've been to Colombia, Mexico, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Puerto Rico, and Peru as of recently. And um, oh yeah, I've been to Jamaica. Been to Jamaica, I forgot about that one. That was a recent one actually, Jamaica. So which one do I like the best? Uh, they all have their own good things that I like about each of them. Personally, I like to live in Mexico City the best. The best place I've ever been was La Roma and just the day-to-day, -day, uh, multiple things to do. The scenery, um, it's, if you, if you ask me, I think uh, just living, just straight living. Mexico City is a beautiful place to go and um, you know, that's why I'm moving to Mexico City. I'm gonna probably be there for three to six months, not sure yet. Um, we'll see how Zeus likes it. Um, one of the reasons why I like Mexico City is because they have a dog park and big dog park. And I'm talking like, um, there's a big dog park, dog park culture. So I'm excited to go there and raise Zeus. Zeus is a puppy. I don't know if you guys know, he's getting real big. He's actually at daycare right now. So, um, yeah, so Mexico City, when it comes to like just doing things, uh, just living day to day, I do like Mexico City the best. Um, I did like living in Costa Rica. That was fun until they had all the like different vaccine requirements. Um, I would say that um, the only thing I didn't like about San Jose is that the city's kind of crappy sometimes. And I don't know, you just, just got tired of how crappy it was. But um, one thing I did like about it was it was beautiful. Like it was a beautiful, luscious green, just like Mexico City, it was just very luscious and green. Um, you know, and not to say that all of San Jose is crappy and all that, but probably just the part I was at. Um, so, but this is just per, just this is just personal thing, right? This is just my experience. Um, that was uh, Costa Rica was okay. Ecuador, uh, I went to their modern city. What is it? Not Quito. Let's look it up really quick. I went to their modern city. It's their newer city. So Ecuador cities. Let's see. I forgot which one it was. What's this? Yeah, so has, oh, it's Guayaquil. Uh, Guayaquil. Something like that. Guayaquil. I wasn't a big fan of Guayaquil. Me and my girl went and uh, we just, we just, uh, it, I mean, it has a nice, it was nice. That's all I could say. But at the same time, it was like very, felt very dangerous just certain times. Um, at the night, I don't know, it sounds kind of funny, but like I could walk in Peru safe. Um, Colombia, I could, most of the time I could walk at night safe. Costa Rica, I felt like I could walk at night safe. Um, the only place that I really felt not safe anytime I ever traveled was Ecuador, you know, um, when I was in uh, Guayaquil. Um, so, 
I really wouldn't suggest Ecuador. Well, I wouldn't suggest Guayaquil. I didn't really like it. Wasn't my favorite place. Um, but what I would suggest is Montanita. And Montanita was a city me and my girl went to. It was nice, it's a beautiful beach. There's a bunch of uh, cities, like little cities there that you can stay in on that coast. And uh, yeah, I just loved, like Montanita was so much fun. We stayed at this uh, like boutique hotel right on the beach. We, uh, what did we do? We went to the beach. We, uh, I mean, the beach is beautiful. Like it was nice to just uh, stay at such a nice place and then be right on the beach, wake up and put your feet in the water. It was nice. We also, um, there was a bar right below our place so we could go down, hang out around there. It's like a little swing. It was very, it was pretty cool. It was like a cool little bar, hang out um, kind of place. There was a big, uh, gigantic dog that used to hang out there and a couple other dogs that would just chill and hang out too. So uh, Montanita was very cool. Um, I liked it. I probably stay there for, you know, another time so that was just for a couple of days and i probably wouldn't live there to be completely honest because it is um a touristy town and um it's very transient people are there for a couple of days and leaving a couple of days leaving that's just how it goes right puerto rico i was there during all the um crazy vaccine requirements were have uh, were happening so a lot of people just wasn't going uh out so it was like a ghost town. They just had a bunch of bullshit rules, to be honest. I mean, they were shutting down the businesses. I mean, it's already a failing business atmosphere and they want to shut the businesses down, which was fucking crazy. That's another story. Um, but yeah, like I said, that's another story. What I suggest PR, aside from the taxes, um, you know, the tax benefits, uh, you know, I bet it's up and running now. So I'd probably have a different outlook if I went there and checked it out. So that's that. I just know I've had good times in Puerto Rico before. So I can't really say it's not a bad, not a good place to stay. Um, but I bet if I went recently, there'd be more, it would be a lot more popping and good things happening. Peru. I am Peruvian. I have a lot of uh, family cousins, second cousins there. So um, I do have a love for Peru, um, Lima, um, I spent, you know, I've probably spent at least seven months between the last two years in Peru, maybe more than that, maybe more like eight months. So I was actually in Peru most of the time, Peru and Colombia. I spent uh, five months in Colombia. I see whenever I go a place, I usually do three months and then leave. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Um, Peru, Lima, very nice. Have family there. Uh, the city's nice. Cold a lot of the year, but it is what it is. Um, hold on one second. Cold a lot of the year. It is what it is. Um, but cheap. Uh, cost of living is very cheap. Pretty much all these areas, of cost of living is very cheap. So... Which one would I suggest? It depends on what you want to do. Do you want to be there? Well, here's one thing I would say. Whenever you go to a place, you always want to be there for at least two to three weeks. Because if you're just there for one week, like you, you can't really get the feel of the people, the different cultures and stuff like that. You don't, you don't get to talk to enough people to really understand how the culture is, you know? And um, a lot of things you really figure out, you're not even trying to figure it out. It just happens and like the, the differences and the likes and dislikes, it just happens in common and casual conversation. But you can't do that if you're like always trying to find something to do and like always like ramped up to like do something because you're about to leave. So you can't relax and enjoy it. So I suggest, you know, if you're gonna travel someplace, make sure, you know, obviously there's a good Wi-Fi and you can go and obviously you have the money. Uh, make sure that um, you stay there for a couple weeks at least. Um, and that's what I usually do. I usually like to stay there for three months, 
you know, at least to figure out what it's like and um, enjoy it, man. Cause it's all about like, uh, it's hard to say that like in one month you could really figure a place out. It's just, you know, you know, especially cause the way that my life works, um, you know, I have two businesses and I'm just, I got multiple things going on right now. So, um, you know, I'm busy some days, I'm busy the whole day. Some days I'm just playing around, just doing whatever the fuck I want to do. Sometimes I'm busy for two weeks straight, you know, from when I wake up to the end of the night, just depending on a project I'm working on. And sometimes I'll just go a whole week where I'm really not doing much and just doing the basic stuff. So that is um, what my life is, uh, you know, that's what my life is like for the most part. Um, it's not just, you know, I don't, you know, obviously I go to the gym. That's one key thing that I always do and very consistent on. But like when it comes to work, I deal with projects and um, I deal with projects you know, so I'm not like crazy, like I wake up and I have to work. Like I said, sometimes I'll just wake up for a whole week straight and not do the minimal work. Just to, maybe if I'm in, for example, I was in Jamaica for, was it five days? I think it was six days. Um, I didn't do much work, I just did the minimum at the end of the day. And, um, when I was in Colombia, I stayed there for five months. You know, I would go a month, two months, where I would not do anything. So, um, that's my girl, she just made an appearance. Yes. <laughs> so anyways, uh, that's that. So, if you are looking to travel, make sure like when you go travel, go experience it. Don't just go there for like two weeks, unless it's like a touristy town that you really don't want to be there for more than two weeks. There's some places where you stay for one week and then there's some places where you stay for, you know, you gotta like if you, you can't visit New York City and get the feel for the place without staying there for a while and visiting different areas. So that's how I look at traveling. It's like, you gotta go to a city and you you experience different things, different places, so that different parts of the city, different parts of the state, the country, etc. And then you can kind of like talk to a bunch of people, make friends, all that stuff with the locals. Then you can really get a feel of what the country's like, but you can't do that if you just go for a week, like I was saying earlier. All right, now let's talk about why, when and why did I start traveling? So when I started traveling was about, I wanna say it was uh, two and a half years ago, and I have to, um, maybe two and a half years, two and a half years ago to three years ago, I'm not quite sure, but, <clears throat> The reason why I started was because for a lot of my 20s, I was really, um, I was doing real estate, multiple things, right? And, um, you know, I was really a, you know, playing soap, I was a struggling entrepreneur for many years. Now, when I started flipping DTS was when all of my skills that I had learned out there all the all the major skills I learned just kind of like boom. it was like holy shit this industry is perfect for the skills that I have so it was like a love story <laughs> and like the skills that I had as an entrepreneur just like was boom it was like holy shit I can really scale this so after about six months I was making about five hundred dollars a day locally um, and I started making money online as well. So when I started making money online, it got to the point where, like I said, I was making four to $500 a day consistently online. Um, uh, and that doesn't even count like the uh, local. So I started doing that. And at, when that's, when that picked up, I, uh, I knew I could like, 
scaled this business online. Um, I remember saying a couple of months, I'm going to be uh, traveling to Peru and um, going to see what Peru's like and, and, and do this business while I'm traveling. And um, my goal was to travel for a year. Actually, no, my goal was to travel for three months because um, I had a knee injury that I wanted to, I had to, I wanted to come back home and do the knee surgery. But it's funny because I ended up traveling for two years before and not, not doing, making excuses and not doing the knee surgery uh, until recently, a couple, seven months back, eight months back, I want to say. Maybe more than that, nine months. Yeah. I think it was about nine months. So anyways, um, <clears throat> reason why I did it, I started making money online. And as soon as I realized, okay, I can make this money, I outsourced everything. I outsourced marketing, uh, everything. Administration, organization, calling, texting, distribution, I had uh, uh, somebody that would take in all my products, distribute it, um, organize it and distribute it out for a, you know, uh, so it was like a partnership that was just perfect. Um, it made sense. So I knew that like, yo, I gotta get going. I wanna go travel. So I did. And uh, if you wanna know how to start flipping diabetic products, I do have a course, it's in the link. Um, if you're looking to hit your first 100K, con contrary to what people are saying right now, I'm still making the most money I've ever made in my life because I'm um, flipping products. You know, people are saying the market's going down. No, the market's not going down. You just have to adapt. And that is that goes with any industry you're ever in. It's not that the market goes down. It's you have to adapt and go to, uh, you know, look at different products and look at other products to buy and sell. And that's what you have to do. So, um, like I said, the link will be in the description if you wanna go check that out. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I have multiple, by the way, I have multiple courses, how to hire, fire, and manage virtual assistants, how to flip diabetic test strips, um, and uh, CRMs for dummies, CRM for dummies, which means um, how to build a CRM, customer relationship management. These three things are the most important thing. You gotta know how to flip diabetic test strips. You have to know how to hire virtual assistants so that you can outsource all the talking and all the sales, marketing and all that stuff, administration. And then three, you gotta have a CRM to put all your customers in do uh, texting campaigns, email campaigns, and all these different kinds of things. Um, there's a lot other things you could do with, with the CRM, but these are just the basic things. And then also call and text just from one location so everything's organized. And I teach you how to do that. Now, just on a quick side note, because I want to get back to traveling. On a quick side note, once you start making good money locally, you wanna start trying to figure out how can you make money online with DTS. And you really wanna do that. So um, once you start making it locally, making good money locally, reach out to me when you're seasoned and you've done some deals locally. Uh, I do have a mastermind. In the mastermind, we teach people how to flip diabetic products and make good money online. And that's what I've been doing for years now with DTS. Also, um, you know, we do other hustles in there too as well. I don't talk about that part, but there's, you know, I've got other hustles and they have other hustles that they do as well in there. There's people that are making other incomes in other areas as well as DTS. The cool thing about DTS is you can do, it's really, to, it's really easy to, if you can outsource right, you could do both at the same time. So one, get the course, start making pretty good, decent money, reach out to me <clears throat> or get the virtual assistant course. You'll learn how to hire a virtual assistant. 
Look at that CRM for dummies. If you never, if you have never used a CRM, you need to um, get that course. Like you really need to, just to understand how to use a CRM because it's so important for your business. All the biggest businesses in the world have used CRMs and you need to too. And they've also used virtual assistants. So boom, those two things are very, very important skill in the future that is so uh, um, underestimated. Just want to say that. Um, <clears throat> so go to the links below and check all that stuff out. Now I want to talk about importance of making USD and euros in countries where the cost of living is less. So because I make US dollars, when I go to other countries, my US dollar is worth more than um, the currency there. So I'm able to have a better life than I would in the USA for more. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I'm just talking for beginners and I want you guys to understand this idea. You know, I still have pretty much an above average life here in the USA. Um, when it comes to money and, um, which is not really like, it's, you don't really have to make that much to really say that, but, um, you know, I make pretty good money. And if you're in this industry, you know, how good money, how much of good money you can actually make. So, um, that's that. So let's talk about going. So when I was in South America, Central America, um, When you are, when you go over there, it's a different experience because your money goes a lot further than how it goes here in the USA. Now, um, it's really cool to be in other countries. I just like the cultures and understanding the cultures. It's a lot of fun. But um, like I said, having USD, having, um, being from Europe and going to those other countries, um, you can live a good life and um, it's really cool. So, um, what do you need to actually do this? Okay. What you need, hold on one second. Uh, what you actually need, what do you actually need to get this done? Obviously you need a passport. Um, you need to have, a, you may, you need to make a, a commitment to making money online. Um, and, uh, you need a business that you can do online and you need a, or you need a business, uh, sorry, a job role that you can do remote work. I know people that do remote work for companies and I actually, the people that work for me, I actually let them know that they can do remote work. They can actually, and they make enough money to where they can travel if they really wanted to. Um, so, uh, you know, I even tell the people that work for me, and this hasn't bit me in the ass yet, but the people that work for me, if you want to do remote work, move to other countries, and as long as you're getting your work done, I don't care what you do. So um, that's one of the things I tell my virtual assistants, okay? Um, another thing you're going to need is virtual assistants. Um, <clears throat> check out my virtual assistant course. I show you how to hire, fire, and manage virtual assistants. Very simple, step-by-step, step, how to find them and pretty much how to do that process. So like, it's not as hard as you think. And I explain step-by-step step how to, on a very, very basic level, get it done. Um, the last thing, what you're gonna really, uh, well, one of the last things you're gonna need is Fiverr. Fiverr, you can do multiple business things on, um, when it comes to uh, like Photoshop, so many things. I've done so many things for my business that is crazy. Um, <clears throat> pretty much, you know, I've made so much money just from using the different services, copywriting, um, photo, I did a logo. Uh, let's see, I did some high level consulting for my accounting process. Um, <clears throat> uh, high level spreadsheets. 
um, did some consulting for, I got, I have a Walmart store. Um, they got me my Walmart store. They set it all up for me. They did everything for me. And um, so yeah, I've done a lot on Fiverr that you can also use. People always forget about Fiverr. It's like, you can get so much done on that website. I highly suggest if you're an entrepreneur that you use it. <clears throat> One of the, another thing I was gonna talk about too, <coughs> was when if you have a remote job one of the things you want to do as well is you want to you should get a virtual assistant just to take the personal task off your hand or a maid somebody that can clean your house somebody that can do a lot of the stuff that you don't want to do now that could be your girl that does the different cleaning stuff <laughs> Just joking. Actually, I'm not. But uh, no. But on a serious note, like if you're a, a traveling entrepreneur, you're by yourself. You want to have a maid. You want to have somebody that can clean your house and do a lot of the personal tasks. So if you're a serious entrepreneur, you want to focus on expanding the business and doing what you're best at. So. That's a big thing when it comes to being an entrepreneur is take all the minuscule things, all the little things off your tasks, off your plate and do the big things that make the most money all the time and get good at those specific things so that you can make money all the time. So focus on the big things and delegate the small things. So that is one of the things I highly suggest as well. Um, you know, like I said, uh, you can also hire people in other countries. I, I hired somebody to help me with Spanish. I hired somebody to uh, help me with my YouTube. You know, you can do that. There's people there that you can talk with and uh, form a relationship with, okay? Uh, another thing when you're traveling is you wanna have a strong Wi-Fi connection. Usually when you go, when you use Airbnb, you can usually have a decent Wi-Fi connection. Um, hold on one second, go ahead. <clears throat> it's not that bad. Okay, so. So you wanna have a strong Wi-Fi connection. Wherever you go, you wanna make sure you have a strong Wi-Fi connection, it's very important. You gotta check with your Airbnb owner, your Airbnb host, so that you can really figure that out. Um, but I want to cut this video and uh, start to get to the end here and start ending it. So, like, I want you guys to really, if you've never traveled and work, keep this in mind. Keep everything I just said in mind because all this stuff is very important and stuff that you really need to think about, okay? Um, and just understanding that you guys, you need VAs, you need uh, CRMs, you need a business that will make you good money and uh, be able to travel, okay? Or you also need to have a, a, a business, uh, sorry, a job role that will let you do remote work. Um, I've met a lot of people, I have friends, and I've met a lot of people just traveling that, have, that do remote work for companies. And that is a very, very new thing. Not a very new thing, but it's a very popular thing now, okay? Um, last but not least, like traveling is just a, traveling and working is just a great lifestyle. You know, it's just, there's so much benefits to it if you think about it. I'm gonna move to Mexico. This apartment is $3,000 a month. Um, if I go to another country with the same $3,000 I'm paying right now for this apartment, it's furnished. Um, and it's a short, it's a short lease. It's a short lease, small lease. It's a short lease, it's a six month lease. So I can take this 3K that I'm using here and I can go to, I'm gonna go to Mexico City, maybe pay $2,000 a month because 3K is like, that's how much I put the budget for my renting pay $2,000 for a month for something very, very nice in Mexico City. So just keep that in mind. Your dollar can go farther. Or you could just go super cheap and basic, you know? 
um, you know, I'm at the point in my career where it's like, uh, you know, what really matters to me is a nice place. A nice place is very important to me. <coughs> I don't like staying in places that are crappy because I need to be inspired by what's around me because I'm probably at home more than anything. So I need to be inspired by where I'm at. Um, so if you're a new traveler and you want to just go places to save money, I'm not mad at you. I would do the same thing. If I wasn't making as much money, I would just go places and just, you know, try to save money and, you know, get my skills up, get my career up, get my monthly income up, my yearly income up, you know, and, uh, you know, I would just keep building, keep building. So that's what you want to think about. It's like, okay, I'm going to go to another country. My cost of living is going to might be half of what it is now. And I'll even bet like my cost of living when I go to Mexico City is gonna just chop right in half. Um, and not, it, it's really not that I'm just so worried about the money at this point, like, cause I'm not really worried about the money. Even in the USA, I'm not really worried about the money, but it just feels nice to like, I don't know, it feels nice to wake up. Let's say I went out the night before, had a crazy night. I'll look at my bank statement and it'll say $1.50 for Red Bull Vodka. Whereas here in the United States, the RBVs are like fucking eleven fifty, and I think they're more now. I think they're like $12, $13. So that's what I'm saying. It just feels nice to like not pay as much and just, you know, I guess you could say just be cheap. Um, to be honest, I just, I love other countries. I like other cultures. So me traveling feels the best. I like that. So it's just easy. It's like if you can travel to another place or be in another place, you can make more money, you can save more money, you can be around different cultures. Like, why wouldn't you? You know what I'm saying? So um, it's just like an easy, it's a no brainer. Big time. So, what am I up to now? Well, obviously, I'm building my DTS business. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm starting to really work with bigger wholesalers and distributors uh, for DTS. And I have hired a whole, you know, we're at four people. So we have like a pretty much a distributor department where we deal with bigger wholesalers in our space so that, um, yeah, so our margins are gonna be going up a lot. And, uh, you know, it's just been crazy, like just to look at what our margins are looking like now, um, it's crazy. I just gotta say it's crazy. So <clears throat> as of recently, I've taken all of my attention and put it all on, for the most part, on building that department and making sure that that just grows because it's gonna gonna you know close to double our bottom line so that is that's the kind of advancements that we're talking about here so i'm focusing on that um <clears throat> more than anything obviously i'm building my dts business um you know doing great things there and last but not least i am still doing consulting I am still helping people with their CRM. Um, I am giving people advice on uh, my Calendly. Um, obviously it's paid, but um, you know, you can hop on my calendar and I can give you advice as well. I do still have the palette, com the palette CRM build out. I was flipping palettes for about six months. After a while, it just didn't make sense for me to work on it as much because my margins and my DTS business were so much higher. And we started do dealing with uh, bigger, uh, larger wholesalers. So now we're getting into such a bigger, uh, we're just becoming, we're just making big gains. That's it. That's all there is to it. So I said, you know, the money here is like, that's too ground level for me. I'm gonna stay with building out this department in my business so we can focus on bigger wholesalers. So I've been all go on that. But um, <clears throat> while I was flipping pallets, 
the system that I had helped me generate a lot of palettes. So I have a lot of experience with generating palettes and using a CRM. Nobody really talks about that, which I really don't understand why people don't talk about that in that industry. But what I realized is most business people don't even effectively use their own CRM. They just fly by the seat of their pants. They don't know how to use text, uh, text campaigns, email campaigns, just basic fucking CRM management. Most people don't use. So, um, you know, a lot of people kept on asking me like, what are you doing? How are you generating leads? How do you keep on getting people? I can't get one person, which I'm like so surprised. All you gotta do is make 150 calls a day and you're good. You're probably gonna get at least, I don't know, five to six people that you can go pick up product from. But the thing is I didn't make those calls. I hired virtual assistants to do that. And so anyways, I say all that to say that, you know, if you're still, if you need help with your CR, if you need help with CRM management, sales marketing, anything like that with pallet, the pallet industry, you can still get on a call with me. And uh, I know in the future I will, uh, I will start doing the um, uh, brokering, you know. Um, brokering is not that hard. I did one brokering deal. It's not a hard thing to do. Actually brokering is easier than just doing the local bullshit driving around. Um, it's a lot easier actually. Um, but no one will tell you that either. It's just, uh, when it comes to like getting a deal done, it's just way easier. It's all mental. It's all using the mind talking versus picking up pallets. It's physical. So, you know, to me, brokering is a lot easier and it's a lot more, uh, the money is a lot cleaner, meaning like from A to B, there's a better A to B there. Like you make the deal happen and then you make cert, you know, a certain amount of money. So that is actually what I will be doing. Uh, probably when I get to Mexico, you know, um, when I have enough time, I do want to continue that project. But if you want to figure out how I was able to generate leads, keep everything organized, call everybody back, email everybody back. I do have a pallet little little pallet video course on how to use a CRM and how to hire virtual assistants. And I actually even go in depth on how, uh, what you tell the virtual assistants to do um, their task every single day. You know, the same thing with the CRM, how to use the pallet. How, if you're a pallet guy, how do I use the CRM? What to do certain things, you know, and just the things that I was doing that was crazy because it seemed like to a lot of people, like it was cutting edge, like it was something miraculous, but it was really just basic things that I've done in any industry that I've ever been in. And I know this is a 38 minute video, but um, I'm gonna cut it short here. But so anyways, uh, I am available for consulting. I've consulted in multiple industries that I haven't even been in. I've helped chiropractors, you know what I'm saying? I've helped plumbers, I've helped, like what I know when it comes to sales marketing and, and, and uh, managing people is very, it's very universal because business isn't complicated. Like people just make it complicated. So you can, it's easy to find out what works and what doesn't work just by talking to somebody. So, um, like I said, business isn't complicated. Uh, you just need to know how to use your tools and you gotta get the reps in, you know what I mean? So, that's that. Like I said, uh, if you wanna book me for a consulting session, I will start having that available below. Uh, I just didn't wanna do it for a long time because uh, you know, even though it was good money, I mean, I think I was charging 150 to like 300, $400 per hour, depending on what subject it was, but it's just not worth it to me um, as much. 
Also, if you want to do any kind of mentorship with me with diabetic test, diabetic testing supplies, um, <clears throat> you can reach out to me. I'm not sure I will do it, but if you can pay me the right amount of money and uh, that makes sense, I will do it. But you got to really want it. Uh, you know, I don't want anybody that is just lazy. I need people that want to do it and are ready to do it. So if you could pay me the right amount of money, it's going to be easily a five figure. I mean, it's going to be, um, yeah, it's going to be a five figure investment total. So um, if you want to work with me, you can, but I'm just saying I charge a lot and, uh, you know, I've helped multiple people become six figure earners online. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people. So uh, you can contact me below and appreciate you for listening. And uh, thank you very much. All my links will be below. See you later.